Hello, hello, hello. What's up, money maker try, money maker try. I'm going live, 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 live. Hi, hi, everybody. <laughs> If anyone's here oh okay people are coming on great hi everyone hi 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 what's up what's up what's up i hope we have a great week guys um we're now in the middle of april there's been a lot of things happening hcmc we'll talk about uh, everything let's just get people uh, on let people get a second to go uh, get on and we'll talk what's up smash the like button smash 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 Woo. let me just pin the comment for one second i want to pin the comment good week everybody how are you doing hope everyone is well hope you're mentally okay hope you are um rested over the weekend and you're ready for a great week next week hopefully we'll have only green in our portfolio no reds <laughs> here we go okay ole it seems uh stuck to me but can you see me let me know in the in the chat i, I see on my screen it looks uh stuck um so can you see me because uh let me see what uh, I'll show you guys. I look stuck uh, to me. So am I stuck or am I, is it working? Let me know uh, in, in the comment, please. Live. Am I stuck or can you guys see me? Okay, okay, great. <laughs> I thought I was stuck. Okay, great guys, great, great. So. Uh, hopefully we're gonna have a great week uh, this uh, coming week and uh, lots of green lots of green we have a lot of things to talk about so uh, let's uh, let's talk so um, there was one thing I wanted to, to take a look at you guys and I don't know if you've seen it online you know people were talking about it but this uh, Royal Bank uh, situation here so uh, of Canada so on my thinker swim platform uh, it, it just cuts off here at this time but when I went back and I looked people were you know saying uh, there's you know maybe a lot of uh, something shady happening here that they don't want us to know what's going on uh, I, I looked back and I see it also like the day before we only had one candle here and there was only a few candles here in the aftermarket uh, going back so uh, if you if you haven't seen uh, also here only four candles if you haven't seen what's going on with this uh, royal royal uh, canadian uh, so what what the big deal is here is that the stock uh, fell in after hours uh, but the only place that you can see it is on google right in all the platforms it doesn't show you that it went down 60 percent to 33 and the big thing here is that citadel which is one of the you know <laughs> enemies of the of the state here <laughs> because of uh, amc uh, so Citadel has a big position in AMC and a lot of people are saying, okay, now that Citadel has gone down, uh, that is going to lose a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, their position in AMC. Uh, so then it will uh, affect the, the stock going forward. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see, uh, let me, okay, we'll have to see if this is something that's real or it's a glitch, you know, in the, in the, in Google's uh, algorithm here. Uh, but we'll see uh, it's going to be very important <laughs> to see what's going to happen um uh I'll go on monday if we're going to have uh you know a, a nice uh a nice uh jump here people are saying okay if citadel lost a lot of money maybe they'll be talking with their client and saying listen we lost a lot of money we need you to uh we need to cough up uh, the money now we need you to close your positions we need the money so uh, this is uh, what what people are you know uh, in the in the forums in the reddits <laughs> are talking about we're gonna see 
it's very fishy it's very interesting uh that why this happened here uh that somebody you know sold such a big position after hours that it, it and and i think i saw that there's only like two trades in after hours so uh this this stock hasn't been moving it it, it moved from 70 to uh, around 90 but in the last six months but it's a uh, fairly stable you know it's 134 billion uh, market cap so uh very very stable stock so for it to drop of 60 percent you know that's uh, that's like 60 billion dollars even more so that's a lot of money so uh we'll see tomorrow if there's going to be an effect or not uh, we'll probably see it already in pre-market if there's something to to do with uh amc you'll probably see an effect in pre-market uh, let's take a look at amc what we can you know get, take um, and see from uh w what we had this week so um, if you haven't yet smashed the like button smash 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 and soon we're going to be talking about dogecoin yes dogecoin ole 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 you know how i like the the smashing of the like button <laughs> So we have, uh, wow, 40,000 uh, up on Dogecoin alone. Amazing, amazing, amazing. No, I don't have a position in Dogecoin. Uh, the only reason w uh, I wanted to, it's not that it's a, a, a big deal, right? You can uh, buy through buy Binance um, in Israel, but uh, the fact that uh, you have to, uh, it's not like when you guys buy on Robinhood, when you're just using the money from your portfolio and then you're buying the Dogecoin, and um, and that's it, right? Uh, we I need to buy real coin, right? I need a wallet. I need that uh, for the Dogecoin. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just been I've been lazy, so so I haven't bought any. Uh, but uh, and like in anything that's going up, uh, you know, 100, 200, uh, 700, 1,000 percent. You have to make sure that um, that you know what's uh, going on, right? Uh, with a stock like this, and make sure that uh, that you know. Wait, just uh, refreshing my live stream here because it's uh, giving me errors, and uh, hopefully it's still live. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, it seems that I have an error here, but okay, never. Mind. Okay, now now we're good. Oh, now we're good. Uh, I was stuck, but now I'll, I'll show you guys. It was stuck, but now I can see what's going on. So I thought maybe you guys uh, was stick it. Uh, so I think that uh, we're, we're have a little bit of cooking here and in the next week we're going to see some very interesting things that are going to be happening. Let's just uh, take, uh, yeah, we just talked about that, uh, Talal, about the Royal Bank of Canada and uh, smash the like button, guys. 100 people here and only 30 likes. I'll drink the Kraken. <laughs> like what this Trey says, he'll drink the Kraken. That's what uh, Jason Tan here said. So if you like the Kraken, I don't have any Kraken. I have a little bit of whiskey. Uh, maybe I'll get the whiskey out and we'll drink the whiskey. If we get uh, 1,000 likes, then I'll start with the whiskey. <laughs> that, will be, that will be funny. We'll start with the whiskey. I'll go get my Jack Daniels and we'll have some fun. Um, so let's just take a look at Dogecoin. Uh, I made a video about Dogecoin, Dogecoin. Uh, a few days ago. I think it was Friday. And then uh, it went down after I made the video, of course, right? Uh, when you make a video about something, then the price is going to go down. But if we take a look here, um, it w this was the day I think I made the video when it was when it hit 43. Uh, then we pulled back all the way to 26, and it's back up to 35. Uh, so if you would have seen a stock that went up to you know 45, and then uh, would jump back to 25, and now it was back to 34, you probably wouldn't uh, invest in that stock unless it was uh, something like GameStop or AMC that we've seen some movements like that, or even uh, specifically penny stocks that have moved like. Like this uh, in in a matter of days or matter of, or of hours so again if you already have a position in it then i just say uh, ride the ride right and and make sure that uh, you're taking the profits out uh, when you can um, and if you don't then make sure that you, if you want to get in right and you're getting in and you uh, uh want to get in make sure that you uh, get in with money that you're 
willing to lose, right? Because we saw that a lot of people that were new to the stock market uh, YOLOing AMC and GME, and then they were afraid and they were sorry about it and that they lost all their money and then they left the stock market. So if you're new to crypto and you're saying, oh, I want to, you know, FOMO, I have FOMO, I want to jump in, uh, just be careful and uh, don't go too heavy in something that you don't understand, right? Um, so that's, that's uh, for now. Um, So HCMC, um, HCMC is uh, currently went up uh, 33% on uh, Friday, uh, HCMC. There's no real uh, reason why it went up, just that the volume spiked here the last hour of the day and it went up significantly, 33%. Um, if you're holding, then great. If uh, you're not holding, then um, then uh, it happens. But uh, <laughs> uh, if you sold out, I don't know, for, for a while, right? Uh, because the stock has been really, um, really down. Jerry is falling in love with me. Uh, <laughs> okay, Jerry, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so... Thank you, Baked Lasagna. <laughs> what a funny name. <laughs> um, so HCMC. Uh, a lot of the penny stocks, a lot of the penny stocks have been uh, dropping. And it's something that you guys have to understand. Uh, penny stocks are, are dangerous. Penny stocks are volatile. Uh, and people the past few months have gone a little bit too heavy on penny stocks. All of my, um, all of my uh, videos almost all of them, it's the 99% of my videos, I say that penny stocks are dangerous, no more than 2% of your portfolio, I say it all the time, yes, I know I have the Yankee hat, um, I, I, I gotta get some new hats, I gotta get some new hats, um, and um, that uh, no more than 2%, and people, you know, were laughing at me, you know, I'm going in 100%, uh, I'm gonna double my money, I'm gonna triple my money, I'm gonna thousand my money, it sounds a little bit like what's happening now with Dogecoin, uh, so just just be careful, right? Uh, you know, uh, shame me once. What's the expression? Shame on me. Sh uh, first time, second time, third time. I don't remember the expression, <laughs> but you know the expression. And uh, so we got burned on the penny stocks. We got burned on the growth stocks. Let's ne not get burned on the Dogecoin as well. So. Um, um, CTRM. CTRM, uh, I made a video about them, I think on Friday as well. They came out with another uh, ship on um, Friday that they were buying another ship. It really didn't affect the stock, although uh, we have here the stochastical. You can see if you don't know what stochast stochastic full is, um, it tells us that there's a change basically in the trend. <clears throat> So here we see that the red is crossing the purple. This could mean that we have a change in the trend here, but it really, um, I was kind of concerned with the fact that it didn't really move positively, positively from the um, news about the ship. So uh, we'll have to see um, what's going to happen with that. <laughs> GME, while I'm putting a GME up, smash the like button, <laughs> SNDL, we can talk about SNDL as well. A lot of people are waiting for 420, right? Uh, the day of the cannabis. Uh, so GME is very interesting, again, uh, for the same reasons uh, that we are very interested in AMC. And I'll tell you why. Uh, whenever there's a consolidation in the stock, whenever you see this low volume in the stock, right? Every time we saw this happen, then when the volume started to go up and up and up, we saw a huge jump. So now for the past week or so, we've just seen consolidation. We've seen a little bit of a drop here, uh, nothing too big. Uh, and there was news that came out uh, last Friday, this Friday, that, uh, you know, uh, the, the person that was holding uh, the, the huge amount of contracts, um, he decided to exercise his contracts, uh, Raging Kitty, right? 
uh, Gil is his name, right? His last name is Gil, I think. Uh, and he decided to exercise the contracts and um, buy the stock. Um, so now he owns the stock and I think he has like 200,000 uh, shares of GME. Uh, so that's a significant amount of shares that were now bought. Uh, probably they got ready for that and, and uh, whoever sold those uh, contracts, remember if you, if you sell uh, a naked contract on, uh, on, on a stock, then you need to, uh, in the end, if the stock finishes in the money, then you need to have the shares to cover this position. So I don't remember what strike price he had, something like really funny, like 20 or something like that, right? If I'm not mistaken, I don't, um, ah, it doesn't show it anymore. It's already, it's already done. But he had like a really low strike price. Uh, and, uh, and he, so if you have this contract here, right, let's say these contracts, all these open interest contracts, the person that sold this contract, if it's naked and they don't have the stock, then the, when the stock, when the contract will be over and they'll need to exercise the contract, they'll need the stock or else they'll need the cash to do it. Uh, so he, he already, uh, had these for a while and I bet the person that sold it, uh, knew what exactly was uh, going on and he, he covered the the position. So um, let's see what else you guys are asking here. Roaring Kitty, yes. <laughs> um, Michael asks here, how high do I think AMC will go? Well, uh, let me move me back to where I want to be and smash the like button, guys. Ole, 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 ole. Do you know what el ole in Hebrew is uh, going up? Uh, so, uh, and, and when you know, like the soccer fans sing ole, ole, ole. So that's like, uh, so go up, go up, go up, I'm saying. <laughs> um, so what's interesting with AMC, let me get back AMC. A lot of people are saying uh, 100, 500, 12,000, 2,000, 1,000, right? Uh, the first, the first goal I want to see, right, is to get back to 20, right? So 20. First of all, let's get to 20, right? This is 20. 20 was where we hit here. Uh, if I'm just taking a look at the technical uh, aspect of this stock, and I'm not looking at, uh, you know, what uh, what the squeeze could potentially bring. If we break 20, okay, if we're able to break 20. That will be a huge, 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 huge resistance. And I think that as soon as it passes that area, that's when they're going to get really scared, the banks and the, and the hedge fund, not the hedge funds, the brokers. And they'll be like, listen, guys, um, we got to start closing these positions. If it, if it breaks over 20, because they're, they're smart. You know, they're smart guys. They're, they're not new to the market. They know how to look at a graph. They know how to look at resistance. And if we're able to break that resistance, I think it could be a huge, huge, huge push. And that's when we could see a big jump, right? And that's when we would start getting the 50, the 100, and then from there, so on and so on and so on. And it all depends how much buying pressure there is. Because if we take a, back a look at GME, you can see that it's not just uh, it's not just the uh, you know shorts that will be closing, right? On this day, you can see that even this day here, there was a lot more volume that was happening here on these days than on this day where we had this huge fluctuation and there was not so much volume relative to the days before that. So it's very interesting. And once we're going to break, see, once it broke here, see, there was volume, right? It went up, it hit 40. And then it's consolidated for a few days. Then it pulled back a little bit. And then when we had this huge day from 40 to around 70, right? Uh, like a 70 or 80%, that's when it started happening. When we had that one day that was able to break through this area, uh, that's when it was able to, to really make the move right uh, and could this make another move also gme to a thousand uh, it, it could it could be i think the gme if it does uh, you know move up again it would get there faster than amc uh, just because the the you know the nor notoriety of uh, gme i think on the street is uh, higher than amc although in the youtube area uh, more people are a lot of hyped up for amc but i think that the 
uh, Joe Schmo. He knows more about GME, and I think there's been more um, articles on TV and on the news about GameStop. So as soon as that happens and that turns on again, I think uh, there will be a little bit more people moving there. Oh. So Suki Saro asked, uh, market is going down day by day. Any idea when it will bounce back? So uh, basically what you just wrote is not correct. <laughs> what you see, if we take a look at the stock market, uh, what people call the stock market, the uh, indexes, the big indexes. So they've been going up. Uh, and, um, and so your portfolio may be going down and i've talked to you know with the the guys in the moneymaker tribe if you haven't joined the moneymaker tribe by the way so subscribe and uh, smash the like button we also have a patreon and a webull affiliate if you're interested in that as well uh, so i've been talking with the guys in the discord and um we, uh, in the tribe a little bit about this lately uh, if your stock is if your portfolio is going down significantly every day right uh, and the stock market, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are going up or are in the green, then something is wrong with your portfolio and your diversification, right? Uh, you have to take a look and see, okay, what's going on? Uh, is my portfolio really heavy on growth stocks? Because that's what was going up the past three, four months. Do I have too many SPACs that have really pulled back uh, lately? Uh, do I have uh, a lot of penny stocks? Do I have a lot of growth stocks? If the answer to that is if you're like 85, 90% of your portfolio is those three things that I said, then you need to take a, a look inside yourself and say, okay, what are my goals? Am I here for the fast buck or am I here for my retirement or am I here for, uh, you know, for my children? Think about that and then start moving things around in your portfolio. Maybe put a little bit in more safe stuff, right? And paper trade for a while get some more confidence back up because I know a lot of people have lost confidence in the past few weeks with the stock market dropping and even left the stock market altogether, you know, sold their positions and left. So maybe paper trade for a little bit, put your uh, money in some big stocks and, and take a, and then take a break and come back uh, in a few weeks or two weeks once you like turn everything off and, and come back. So, um, Yes, there's going to be a share. Uh, it's not a share recall. It's a share recount. I think they are doing for AMC. Um, and that could be, you know, a catalyst that there, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. Um, 10,000 is the floor. The amount of FTDs and SETX are far beyond what they have shown us. <laughs> yeah. So the party party puppy is one of our favorite uh, members of the tribe. He he great great he has great comments. He says my 401k is way up, but my por individual portfolio is down 20%. So yeah, this is what happening. The blue stock chips and the uh, you know the um, S&P 500 index funds keep going up, going up, going up. But you know your individual portfolio, the one that you filled up with the uh, growth stocks and EV stocks is going down. So. Uh, Uh, Dung Thu Li, I hope I said your, your name correctly, he said, some people said history will repeat as 1999 and 2008 market crash and 2020 as well, the market crashed. In your opinion, do you think history will repeat or just another correction? So again, uh, the market itself is not in a correction. And if you've been following uh, my channel, uh, I have said even when the NASDAQ pulled back a little bit, the NDX, we can see. Uh, when we were around here, I was telling everybody, listen, we're in a kangaroo market. And for a week or two, everybody, there was videos here. Everybody was saying the market is crashing, uh, you know, videos with fire in the background. And, uh, you know, everybody was run, sell, you, sell your wife, sell your kids. Uh, and if you had a portfolio that was very heavy in growth stocks and penny stocks, you got hit really bad. But if you looked here on the NASDAQ, which was the main catalyst in why these things started selling off, then it started moving sideways and now it's back and it's even gone higher. 
but uh, the growth stocks and the penny stocks have not gone back because people that were in the market for the first time, they invested in penny stocks and they went all in and then they lost their money and either they took the money out or they invested in Apple, Google, Microsoft uh, and those kind of companies because these are the big companies and this is what they know or they put their money in an index fund and this started pushing up all the index funds and all the, um, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So, uh, the the um so the stock market is not crashing not at all it's a specific uh area in the stock market a small number of stocks it feels like a lot because these are the stocks that were hot and now they're not so uh these are the stocks that you know these are the stocks that people are interested in and these are the stocks that people are talking about on youtube but these are not the main stocks on the stock market. These are not the heavy stocks on the stock market. In 2008, in the beginning of 2020, in March 2020, um, the everybody fell. All the big stocks fell, everything fell. So that's the big difference. Uh, I don't feel that we're in a crash and I don't think there's going to be a crash like we saw. This, uh, what we saw in March happens once every around 10 years, 10, 15 years. Uh, and uh, something like we saw like that won't happen soon, in my opinion. Uh, hopefully I'm, uh, I'm wrong, but uh, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm uh, right on that, not wrong. Uh, but I don't, I don't see a huge correction like 2008. You can see that it's something that happens a cycle, cyclically. You can see this is the end of 2020, uh, 2018 right this is 2018 you can see that in 2018 if you're if you're new to the to the stock market uh, the stock market pulled back significantly and it you can see here it went down uh, a nice percentage here in in the span of a few months right look how it went down uh, and then it recovered and it took it a few it took it a while right it took almost uh, six months or even more for it to get back in this situation that we had just this last week, it didn't even take a, a month, right? It was a month, I think, from the highest point here, right? This is the 16th of February, and this is the uh, fourth, the, no, this is February, so it's two months, right? It took two months to get back to the same uh, situation, not six months, not eight months. So this was a really good uh, recovery here, but the growth stocks have not recovered. So I just if we if we take a look right there, I don't know, even if we take a look at NEO, which is not really growth stock, it pulled back. If we take a look at NNDM that a lot of people were invested in, it uh, significantly pulled back. Uh, I don't know, BNGO that a lot of people were in, it pulled back. Uh, even like things like plug, but these are like SPACs more, it pulled back. So if you have all, only these stocks in SNDL, like someone wrote, uh, you see it, it pulled back significantly. So uh, if you have all these stocks, it feels like there was a significant pullback. But if you have an index fund or you're, you're have, uh, you know, your portfolio is built off of index funds, you're up. So you're not feeling it at all. So this is what I mean that you have to take a look at your portfolio. If, you're, if your goal is to get into high risk, high reward uh, situations, and this is your portfolio, you have only uh, $10,000 maybe, then that's great. But if you're and, and you want to like swing it, swing trades, swing trades, double your money, and you are, understand that you're taking a, a big risk to get the big reward. But if it's something else that you want to do, then you have to go back and take a look at what's happening and, and re, rethink uh, your portfolio. Um, I'll take a drink of water and while I'm doing that, smash the like button. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> Let me know where you are from around the world. I love that to see. I came out with a video a uh, few, like uh, yesterday. Um, and of about four stocks uh, that I, I like currently. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, it, not a lot of people saw it. I don't know why 
it didn't it didn't really get traction <laughs> i think a thousand uh, views i that's a lot of people a thousand views but uh, i i put there four stocks um that i i really like uh, so the first one on uh, that was uh um well we had one there that was a sim uh, it's a shipping company an israeli shipping company that's been doing really great uh, in the past few weeks going up. Uh, people that are in the Patreon um, um, a, a few are, are with me on this play and it's been going really, really great. When everything was going down, this just continues to go up and up and up and up. Um, so this was uh, one of them. Uh, I really like uh, I N M I M N D M I N MD. Imnode, uh, it's a surgical company that does plastic surgery, invasive surgical company. I really like this one as well. Um, I first brought it to the tribe when it was around 70 and now it's almost at 90. So that was a, a good one. Uh, and um, what was the other ones we had? Um, ah, NXST. If you guys don't know NXST. Um, NXST is the biggest cable provider in the US, I like the cable stations. Uh, it's a, it's a, another good stock for diversification of your portfolio, not just growth stocks. You can see it had a big run. I started talking about it when it was like 140 and then it went up to 160, but it pulled back and now it's at 153 and it looks like it's going to uh, continue its run. We'll have to see, but this is a, another, um, another stock for diversification and I have so these are you know a few stocks that would be very good to add to your portfolio for some diversification um, yo boy Steve said DFE did his last update on GME why do you think is that do you think he knows something that we don't so are you meaning that he is not going to be talking about it anymore um, is that the the sitch so uh, it could be uh, that he doesn't doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Maybe he's you know finished. Uh, uh, maybe he um, maybe he exercised his options and now he's like uh, you know I I feel I'm done. Uh, if he sold his shares, then maybe I'd say he was done, right? Like if he got out uh, entirely. Um, but the fact that he said he's not going to be updating, maybe he wants to go have a personal life. I, I guess now he's like a millionaire. If he if he doesn't, um, if the, the shares don't crash, right, of GME, then he's going to be a millionaire. Um, so uh, I don't know. Maybe he wants to go private and be private again. Could be. Um, Zom is in danger. uh zam about the penny stocks guys uh i sold out of zemedica a while back uh when it was at 1.2 it could have been it was a little bit too late i had got in at the beginning at 0 0.5 so i made a nice profit on it not the profit that i had before when it was at two almost three still made a little bit of profit on it um, and uh, it continued to go down since I sold out here at 1.3-ish, uh, yeah, 1.3. The problem with this company currently is that it, there was a lot of hype. Then it was like, buy the rumor, sell the news, uh, and we're just waiting for updates. Uh, and uh, without updates, it, there's not a lot going on. You can see this zero that we have here. They have no revenue. So uh, as soon as the revenue starts coming in, then we can have a better catalyst on the stock. Until then, it was just uh, hype, hype and news and, and things that were moving the company. Could be in the future that this is a big company, a billion dollar company. But, uh, you know, if you're willing to put in a few thousand and, you know, buy some shares and wait on it, then it's OK. But for like the, the short term. Uh, it could be it could be tur uh, turbulent, so you have to you have to be ready for that. And again, not like two percent of your portfolio. That's it. I, w I wouldn't go uh, more heavier than uh, than this on on these stocks. 
Also, SNDL, I don't have a position in SNDL anymore. I sold out, uh, sold my position. And uh, since then, also, you can see it's continued to go down, 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 down. Uh, people are hoping that on 420, it's going to, to pop. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, if, if it does, I'll be happy. Uh, if it doesn't, then if it continues to go down, then maybe I'll uh, open back my position because I had first got on in uh, this position at 0 0.8 and I got out uh, for a profit as well. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, let me see your questions. Uh, Party Puppy said here that he thinks that there's unlimited potential with AMC. So Party Puppy, because I, I, I one of my favorite commenters. <laughs> uh, th the only problem with this is that I don't even know your real name. I'll call you Puppy. <laughs> is that um, it, we don't know what the highest point is, right? And if you put a trailing stop loss uh, for twenty percent. Uh, then you might have a uh, on the way up a dip of 10, 20% and you get uh, kicked out, right? You get stopped out and that's it. So what you can do is uh, in these situations is uh, have a stop loss uh, for a percentage of your position, right? So let's say if you suddenly drop 20%, uh, then you could, I don't know, sell... Uh, it says my video is private, uh, but I put it on public. No, why did it go back to, no, it's public, I think. Let me check on my phone. <laughs> I had, a, I did by accident um, a video uh, before that, and I made it by accident private, and I didn't realize. No, it's, uh, I'm live here, I, I see. I went into my own uh, live stream. And I liked it. Five dislikes. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's public. So, um, so yeah. Let's take a look at uh, Dogecoin because I put uh, Dogecoin, uh, you know, uh, on the title as well. Uh, and it's very interesting what's going on with uh, this price. Uh, it, it looked like it was going to dip down and now it's uh, back up right to 34 area um, so um, we'll have to see uh, where it's going to go from here um, but but uh, we'll we'll be watching it uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, people are going to react um, um, to this uh, to this uh, revolutionary Dogecoin. Dogecoin. It's very interesting because uh, unlike Bitcoin, uh, which you can see that it dropped uh, to 56 area, uh, it came out uh, that the uh, Indian um, government in India is going to be banning cryptocurrency. And I think this is what hit uh, the stocks a little bit. Because, uh, you know, India, there's like a billion people there. And even though that uh, it's not one of the richest country in the world, there's a, there's a lot of people uh, that uh, trade crypto there. So uh, this is a big, big thing. And if uh, this starts, you know, happening in other countries, it could be, a, you know, a, a sort of a bad situation. But we'll have to see, you know, going forward, uh, what, what's going to happen with that. Uh, so let's smash everybody the like button. Smash, 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 smash. Ole, 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 ole. There's 200 people here and only 109 smashing of the like buttons, guys. <laughs> um, how's life in the Holy Land? It was super, super. Uh, no, also uh, Turkey and India. I saw today also India. Uh, so this is new. This is uh, something new. Um, how's life? Uh, it's great. Uh, the... Uh, uh, it was super, super hot today, <laughs> uh, with a short sleeve shirt, you can see, uh, very hot, and tomorrow is going to be even hotter, uh, it's been a really weird uh, weather here, so I don't know, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see <laughs> going forward, hopefully it's not a super, super hot uh, summer here in Israel, um, but, you know, we'll deal with it, <laughs> we're used to the, to the hot, to the hotness. Um, 
Yeah, let's see. I thought India, India, India is banning crypto. Yeah. Um, this is what I saw here. India to propose cryptocurrency uh, ban. So it, it that hasn't passed uh, yet, but it could uh, it could happen. So th this is what uh, um, is happening uh, in uh, yeah. See, India will propose a law banning cryptocurrencies, fining anyone trading in the country, or even holding such digital aster. A senior government official told Reuters in a potential blow to millions of investors piling into the red hot asset classes. So that's that's what happened. Uh, it's not at uh, 0 0.34. Uh, I don't know. This is uh, this is what um, what the, uh, the coin desk is saying. Let me check my Weeble here. Weeble says 31.9. Uh, yeah. So this is not uh, updating live. I thought this uh, updates live, but I guess it's not. Yeah. 32. Yeah. I thought that uh, CoinDesk was uh, updating live, but I do you have a website that updates live the crypto? I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So why why do I I like uh, Do Dogecoin? Why I'm liking why I'm liking on it? Um, so actually, the f the fact is um, that when you have a coin that is a finite like bitcoin it starts becoming um a problem right to use it and i know that a lot of people now are uh, you know companies are giving the option to buy stuff with bitcoin uh, but why would you go if you think that bitcoin is going to go to 100,000 and 200,000 and 300,000 and a million why would you buy a Tesla uh, with your Bitcoin? If you would do this, it wouldn't make sense to me, right? Uh, and and because you're thinking that the price of it is going to continue to go up because there's a finite number of it. And this is like a collectible. It's like an NFT, basically. But with Dogecoin, uh, there's not a finite. They keep printing. It's kind of like the US dollar. Uh, so... <laughs> So in the end, people could use it as a, a way to pay for things and the inflation would be, you know, relative to the inflation of the coin and it wouldn't be something that was changing a thousand percent. I don't know if you've ever lived in a country that has a big inflation, like huge inflation, but in Israel, in the 50s or 60s, there was a huge, huge inflation and people would go to the to the store and buy a loaf of bread, right? And let's say it cost 100. The next day you'd come to the store and the loaf of bread was 1,000. And this was happening because the country was still a pretty poor country. It was a new country. There was uh, wars and uh, there was inflation, like huge inflation. And if you have a situation like that where um, your main way that you pay for things is something that's moving so, uh, you know, fluctuating up and down, then you're going to have a problem, right? You, you're not going to know. Uh, you're going always to be thinking in your back of your mind, uh, tomorrow maybe this uh, banana that I'm buying will be worth as much as the car that I bought a week ago, right? Uh, in, in Dogecoin. So uh, this is this is something that uh, it, it's on one hand it could be good and on one hand it could be not good. If it's a, a situation and it's funny because uh, now people are getting into uh, Dogecoin to trade it into dollars, right? Because you're currently investing in crypto to make dollars. You're not investing into crypto, probably most of you. I don't know uh, to get the coin and hold it and like an N like an NFT and uh, like an investment, like a house, right? You want in the end to get dollars. So uh, people that say I, I get it, uh, I'm buying these coins so I can use it to get goods. Uh, so that's that makes sense to me, but. Uh, in the end, there's going to be inflation on it, right? So you might have the coin and suddenly it drops 50% and then tomorrow you can't buy the things that you need. So you're going to need dollars anyway until um, it's going to be able to be uh, something that's more stable, right? 
Like the dollar doesn't move 10-15% uh, every day or go down 6.2% every day. Um, so it's something that uh, it, it could be amazing, uh, but it, it needs to still change a little bit. So that's, uh, that's just my two cents on that. Uh, buy a Tesla with Dogecoin, yeah. How much money do I make on YouTube? One million dollars. No, no, no. I came out with a video, I think, uh, a few uh, months ago uh, that I made uh, 4,000 uh, my first month. And then the second month I made uh, from the AdSense uh, around 14K and then 11. And then this month is going to be around five, I think, or six. We'll see. This is uh, how much you make YouTube. It's not. It's it's not a secret. Like there's tons of videos on YouTube. How much views you get, how much uh, you're making, uh, and I made a few videos about it already. So it's not such a secret. I'm not a millionaire from YouTube. Not yet. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe one day. Um, but currently, uh, that's the situation. I'm doing it full time. I used to be a software programmer, uh, and uh, now I'm doing this uh, until uh, otherwise. Uh, smash, smash, smash the like button. Let me just take a drink. It's uh, super hot here today in Israel. It's like uh, 34 Celsius, 35, and we're not used to it yet. My body isn't used to the heat yet. Uh, in the summer, it's uh, much hotter, but your body is used to the heat. In Israel, we don't have a super chat. So uh, that's why I don't do a lot of lives. Um, you can see I'm sweating. <laughs> I wish there was a super, super chat. We could make a little bit, uh, uh, you know, um, from lives. I like uh, lives just because I can interact with you. And I, yeah, the only th problem with the air conditioning is it makes a lot of noise. Uh, so that's why uh, I didn't turn it on, but... Um, how did I learn stuff about the stock market? Well, that's a very good uh, question. Um, so how, how did I learn? Well, first of all, I, uh, I, I wish I would have learned a lot earlier in life. And uh, that's, uh, you know, um, something on my, my parents, even though my father was super into the stock market, he, he didn't uh, teach me uh, until uh, when I was older, until I had money, a little bit of money. Um, one second, guys, the, the water's coming up. <laughs> yes, I can sell merch. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I, 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 the, if the, the tribe is here, I've been working on the merch for a while, uh, and I, I want it to be like amazing. I don't want to come out with merch and just have it, uh, say moneymaker tribe or let's like with, you know, words, I want to have nice things with, you know, cool that you want to go with. So I'm still working on it. Maybe in the next week or two, we'll, we'll get it out. Um, so uh, how, how did I learn? So in, in the beginning, uh, he taught me a lot. Uh, and it's, there was, it was a lot more uh, mental stuff than, uh, let me like uh, go uh, full, um, yeah, not this. <laughs> let me go like this for this. Uh, so, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump back. Hopefully there's not a lot of people leaving because you can see my, my face uh, bigger. <laughs> um, so I, I started uh, with him and he you know, gave me some tips, uh, what to do, what this, this stock maybe, that stock. And at the beginning was okay, but then I just, you know, um, a lot of mental stuff. He said, don't do this, don't do that. And of course, a young man, you don't listen to your parents and you go and do whatever you want. And I went and I there was some stock that was going up uh, crazy, uh, like a thousand percent in a few days. Uh, and it was like, oh my God, I'm going to put my, uh, uh, I don't know how much money I even had then, uh, 20,000 shekels. Shekels is the uh, coin here in Israel. So that's uh, three, it's like uh, maybe six, $7,000. I'm going to put all my six, $7,000 
in this stack and it's and I'm gonna have a hundred thousand dollars and I'm and I would just got uh, you know and I was a young guy I, I'm gonna it's gonna be great I'll buy this and I'll buy that <laughs> um, so of course it went down 50% the next day and I lost a significant amount of money and then I understood that uh, he was right right <laughs> but of course you don't listen to your parents and you do whatever you want then I understood that I needed to know a little bit better uh, what what I'm doing. Um, so I started um, <laughs> I started to do uh, YouTube wasn't big back then. Um, I think Jeremy from Financial Education was around. No, I don't think he even started back then. Um, there was forums. I read on forums uh, and uh, I read in. Um, yeah, forums and Facebook, it was Facebook groups? No, basically forums was in that, that time. Uh, then my father said, listen, do you want to go, we'll go together to a, a course um, about value investing. So it basically was about uh, Benjamin Graham. If you don't know who Benjamin Graham is, Google Benjamin Graham. He's like the father of, uh, let's Google together, Benjamin so he was one of like the um, the biggest investors out there in the early century uh, the 18 the 1900s right he died in 1976 but he was basically uh, um, Warren Buffett's mentor and he uh, yeah he's a father of the value investing so in the course uh, we learned how to look at uh, um, a balance sheet and uh, you know what everything basically meant there not you know uh, it was a, a few a few uh, courses a few um, not courses a few uh, teaching sessions uh, and each session we learned a little bit more and then um, they uh, taught us how to look for companies that um, that fell into all the criteria of Benjamin Graham, of Warren Buffett, and all these other people. So then I was like really into those kinds of stocks because that's what I had learned. Um, so I didn't really know, uh, uh, you know, a lot more. I, I knew like I was buying Facebook, I was buying Nvidia because these were things that I I knew what was going. I knew these companies. Um, there, my father said that you should look on Zacks. So uh, there was a time that I was looking on uh, this website called Zacks. And they have these uh, rankings, and if you find uh, a, you know a good company that has a higher ranking, uh, then you know it could be that this company was going up, and it worked okay. It wasn't like a huge, uh, uh, you know, success because there's a lot of number one ranks, and it costs money. And I was a young guy; I didn't want to you know create a subscription and all that. Uh, so uh, then I started getting into technical analysis, and then uh, YouTube was getting a little bit more bigger. Uh, and I just started watching videos on technical analysis, trying to understand uh, what what was going on there. Uh, then I started getting into options, uh, and then I did a few um, courses uh, on options, um, and I did that for for a while. Uh, so I'm pretty knowledgeable in options uh, and in uh, technical analysis. I like using it for the options. Uh, Reiner, I, it, Ray, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't there yet. He wasn't, uh, he hadn't started yet when I started. So there was like uh, all these people that uh, aren't here anymore, probably uh, that like uh, some Indian guys. <laughs> Nobody was a lot of uh, things like uh, uh, people that it wasn't a person that uh, showed their face. It was like um, just showing graphs and things like that. It was earlier, like it was uh, four or five years ago, I think. Uh, so, uh, and then, uh, and uh, now I just look, you know, YouTube, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook groups, Telegram groups. You know, I'm always reading articles, trying to understand, try to learning th new things, um, trying to find new resources. Um, I really hadn't traded penny stocks. If you don't know, I'm not like a penny stock expert. Um, I, uh, my one of my father's rules were don't trade companies under one billion dollars, which is basically penny stocks. Uh, that's why I started the penny stock challenge because it was a challenge for me. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to be doing a challenge, right? Uh, whoever's telling you that they're doing a challenge and they're not trying to do something that um, 
that uh, if you're an expert, it's not a challenge for you, right? If you're just trading something that you're an expert in. So that's why I started this challenge and it went great in the beginning. Now it's uh, okay, but uh, you know, I'm still up a nice position, uh, but uh, we'll see if we'll get there. So that was one thing that he told me not to do, uh, but I took it for the challenge and tried to do it. And he came after me because he saw that it was getting great gains. So he started doing that even though, uh, and that was the thing that when I did in my early career, when I lost that significant amount of money on one of my first trades, uh, that was a stock that was under $1 billion. And that's why for a few years, I didn't touch any any stocks uh, under $1 billion, which because I got really burned. And that's probably gonna, what's going to happen to a lot of people uh, over the past few months. So let me take a look at um, uh, what if you have any questions. Um, How do capital gains taxes look in Israel? Um, so it, it basically, um, if you use a uh, Israeli broker, and this is something that's uh, you know good and bad, uh, they do something great for you. Uh, they pay your taxes <laughs> for you. So basically, um, it's 25%, the capital gains. Uh, and um, yeah. 25% straight, um, and if you have losses, uh, you can pull them for six years into the future, meaning, so let's say this year you lost $100,000, uh, for six years now you can take the losses and uh, and let's say the next year you have a 100000 profit, you can take that $100,000 loss from the year before and, um, and um, minus it out, uh, subtract it out and then you don't pay any taxes but you can take it for six years and after six years you can't use it anymore um, and if you're um, if you use it but the commissions are very high right if you use an international broker then you need to uh, pay the taxes by yourself uh, but there's pluses and minuses so because if you use an Israeli broker once you sell the position they automatically take off the taxes meaning that you have less money for your next trade. Uh, if you use an uh, international broker, let's say Interactive Brokers or TD like I use, uh, for, so um, at the end of the year, you pay the taxes, meaning that you can use your position, your money over and over and over and over and over and create larger gains. But at the end of the year, you have to go and, and um, pay and calculate how much taxes you owe and go and, and pay it. So that's like a little bit of a hassle. Usually most people just pay like a, an accountant to do it for them, give them, you know, all the data and go and pay. Uh, but uh, so there's plus and minuses. It's a very interesting situation, uh, but uh, let's see any other. Um, So I want to open a channel just like you and be good like you in the market. What do you advise for me? So Stock Rainbow right now asked. Uh, so first of all, get good at the market and start making videos about something else, right? Um, not about the stock market because if you don't know anything about the stock market, it's a cutthroat um area of the YouTube, of youtube why because if you make videos about makeup right and the makeup isn't that great you won't get uh really hammered but if you talk about a stock and then the stock goes down significantly uh then you're going to get a lot of heat and it's hard to deal with uh so first of all make sure you are mentally ready for that uh, get good in the market, get uh, four or five years of experience in the market, make YouTube videos about something else, get great at YouTube, be amazing at YouTube, and then start doing videos about the stock market uh, because there's a lot uh, that I'm learning. I'm really still a baby. I'm an infant in the YouTube videos. Uh, and um, sometimes I might, you know, my... Uh, um, 
my titles might get a little bit too clickbaity or my uh, thumbnails, but this is just because of the algorithm and I'm trying to learn and I see other people doing this and I'm saying, oh, that person got uh, 100,000 views with that title. Maybe I'll make a title uh, similar and then I get a thousand comments. Why are you always clickbaiting me into this? Uh, so uh, it's it's a learning process. You have to you know find a balance uh, between clickbaits and uh, and and getting people to watching your videos at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, it is a business. This is what I do for a living. Uh, so if you you'd say, why does this store keep uh, you know putting the uh, the bakery making such great smells and making me eat all the the um, pastries? You can't be mad at the bakery for trying to get you into the store. So that's, I don't know. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I talked about uh, HCMC at the beginning of the live stream. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit again. Uh, someone in the Discord just said that, uh, fun fact, uh, somebody just bought $890 million worth of Dogecoin. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> is it, um, is it, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elon Musk, maybe. <laughs> it would be interesting to see if it comes out who did that. Um. And if that's, uh, let's see, uh, I'll, I'll update. Uh, it's uh, up, it's at 0 0.32 still. Um, so nothing on that front. Um, I j just took a, took a look there. Uh, smash the like button guys, uh, and I'll take, I'll take a drink of water. Uh, there was a question <clears throat> about uh, HCMC. So let's just talk about HCMC and then we'll talk about AMC. So basically uh, nothing happened, right? <laughs> well, something happened. The stock went up 33%, uh, but there was volume here that happened at the end of the day that just puts this, pushed the stock up. Uh, there was barcoding and once the stock was able to get out of this barcoding, there was just huge pressure and it pushed it up. Uh, so I think this is what happened. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, there was no news on the Philip Morris. Uh, they, they had a, to a certain specific date to answer or something. Uh, what I read, I'm not sure uh, if I remember 100%. Um, but um, it, it went up and it went up significantly 33%. So that was very interesting. And it all happened at the end of the day, right? The last hour. So AMC, uh, you think they have time to average down some more before we move? I'm holding a lot already at 925, wanting to load the boat more, but not sure if I can below the price. Well, uh, w what you can do is um, you, you don't have to wait all the time for, um, for the dip, right? Um, sometimes we can, you know, grow our position where we at, right? Not on the dip uh, and just just uh, grow our position uh, naturally. We don't always have to grow our position on the dip. It's not something that uh, I know a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, buy the dip, grow your position. Well, what if the stock is going up and you want to grow your position? Of course, you can do that as well. Uh, sometimes a stock will continue to go up and up and up and up, and you're always going to be afraid, well, what if I'm the last uh, sucker, right? In Hebrew, there's a word, a word called uh, friar. Fryer. I know it sounds like a fryer, you know, to fry your uh, to fry your fish or your fries. Uh, but a fryer is like in Israel, it's one of the worst things that you can be. If you're going to be a sucker, that's the worst thing. You don't want to be a sucker. You don't want to be the last person to buy on, at the tip. 
And that's what we are afraid of, right? When we're buying on the way up, we're always afraid that we're going to be the, the last sucker to buy at the top and then it's going to start falling down. Uh, and, and it's always going to happen. There's always going to be that uh, sucker that buys at the top and he's the one that loses out. That's why we try to buy in in uh, pulses and, and not get all of our uh, um, you know money at a specific time. Uh, and so if your cost basis is 9.25 and it goes up to 9.5, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if it goes down, starts going down more, then you have an opportunity. Uh, but uh, if you feel that you want to grow your position, I, 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 I personally uh, would try to grow it some more. And I did on Friday, I bought some more AMC shares. So. If AMC moons, does it matter what your average cost is? Not really, <laughs> right? Um, it, it doesn't really matter, right? If let's, it matters how many shares you have, not your average cost, right? Because if you have 1,000 shares and it's at 1,000, so you have uh, $1 million, right? Right? Uh, let's get the calculator out so I don't look stupid. <laughs> If you have 1,000 shares and it's at 1,000, right? You have $1 million, right? It doesn't matter if you got those 1,000 shares at 9.5 or 9.4 or 9.3. You got those 1,000 shares. Uh, so it, it, it's real, it's, um, it's more uh, important that you get the shares. Uh, and of course, they're going to be cheaper if the price is cheaper, right? And you can get more shares at a better price. But if your average cost is really close to where we are at now, it's it's not that significant. Again, uh, I I just nibbled. I bought like another three four hundred shares, uh, and so just growing it slowly. Uh, and and it's it, when we're in consolidation, that's just like the best the best thing we could do. Of course, we want to get it at a cheaper, right? I bought it at five. I bought it seven and a half. I bought it fourteen. I bought it twelve, and I bought it nine. So I'm all over the place on my buys, uh, but I keep accumulating when I have money, when I feel that there's an opportunity maybe, uh, so I just buy more and more. So. Uh. The Royal Bank of Canada, uh, yeah. So Ryan uh, van der Wilde, van der Wilde, are you from uh, Holland? Are you Dutch? Um, so he asked, sorry, just got here. Um, do you think what's going to happen? <laughs> uh, so what happened with the RBC? Yeah, so we talked about this. What was the ticker symbol on it? Uh, RY, I think, right? RY. Uh, so we have this Royal Bank of Canada. It's a huge bank. Someone wrote before in the chat, I think, I, I missed it and then I saw it, uh, that there was uh, um, ah, in Canada. So this is why it's so important for you that the Royal Bank of Canada doesn't go uh, under. <laughs> um, so yeah, so very interesting uh, what happened here. So uh, basically, Royal Bank of Canada, huge bank, right? $150 billion bank. Um, People are saying that Citadel has a very significant position. I actually didn't take a look at what the size of the position is. Uh, but if you take a look here, uh, we can see that uh, if we look in Yahoo, uh, not Yahoo, Google, Google, um, we see this dip that happened here uh, at um, 5.54 on Friday. Uh, from the 90 area to 33.75 and it says here that it's down 60 percent 64.36 percent it's very very interesting uh, we've seen things like this happen uh, before where we have these glitches sorry guys <laughs> where we have these glitches um, and I saw somewhere that um, there was some selling here that happened here, like two selling. Uh, I think it was on the NASDAQ website. It's, uh, we can see NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ, uh, that there was some like selling in aftermarket and uh, RY. Let's take a look. 
Royal Bank of Canada, after hours. Um, here we go. So this is what happened here. Basically, um, we see here one sell of 448 shares knocked down the stock to 33.75. Um, so it's very interesting that just 448 shares uh, would knock the stock down significantly. But uh, remember that <laughs> Um, the volume here was 200,000. It, it looks like a glitch to me. Uh, it looks like a glitch. It could be that it's not a glitch. Uh, it's synthetic. Maybe something synthetic was happening here. We don't know. We'll see when it opens up and pre-market. Sometimes you'll see something like this and then, um, and then it's suddenly in pre-market, it will fix out. It will be fixed, right? Like suddenly after market, suddenly a stock goes down because there's super low volume. So uh, a, a small amount of shares can move this, the stock uh, significantly. Let's, let's say after market, everybody's selling. So the, the, and, the, and the price keeps going down and down and down. So that's going to move the stock price down, right? Um, so it could be a glitch. It could be just, uh, you know, um, that there was no buying and selling and the suddenly just the selling of 448 shares pushed it down 68%, but that's kind of weird. So we'll, we'll see going forward uh, what, what's going to happen with that. People are saying that Citadel will lose a lot of money and this and that. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yes, but the, the vote is going to expose the fake shares. So it's very important to vote. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're voting, uh, if you have an opinion about this, uh, just like with the elections for your country, if you have the option to vote, always vote, right? Um, so, uh, let's make some money, yes, Tif technical difficulty time. <laughs> there was a stock that somebody wanted, um, yeah, let's smash the like button. Ole, 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 ole. Smash, smash, smash. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> I see it going up, guys. One seventy-two, one seventy-four. Let's get it up to one ninety-seven, guys. Ole, 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 ole. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you guys uh, new in the com in the chat? Are you guys new to the stock market, or you've been um, you know a lot of a lot of years in the stock market? And um, are you here for AMC? Are you here for something else? Are you here for Dogecoin? Just uh, if you're going to buy calls, where would you put them, and at what price, and how far out on AMC? <clears throat> <laughs> um, so I've talked about options about AMC uh, a few times on the channel and um, and my opinion on options uh, sp specifically for AMC uh, is don't do it unless you understand what you're doing um, and don't do it right unless you are willing to lose the money because especially with out of the money options uh, there's a high probability that you're going to lose all your money right it would be better if you would buy stock just buy straight out stock and go to the movie theaters right because um, you can see here that when we have consolidation right the implied volatility on these stock and these options is going down. This was a lot higher. Uh, the implied volatility for AMC was a lot higher and it's going down. So this is good for these options in, in the future. But on the flip side, it's bad for whoever is holding the options because it's probably going to finish out of the money because AMC is a short, short, um, its value is small, meaning that you see here, you have nine and a half and 10, right? These are the only options that you have here to buy options on AMC, right? Um, so 
let's say I bought nine and a half. The stock needs to finish over nine and a half for me to um, to be in the money. But let's say something like GME, right? Or Tesla. Let's not talk about GME uh, on this regard because it's also the implied volatility here is, is high. Let's say Tesla, okay? Now Tesla uh, is a very... Um, uh, it's, it's harder to trade because you can see here that the options are a lot ex more expensive, meaning you need $2,000 at least to trade uh, these options that are slightly out of the money. Okay, so you need a significant amount more of, of uh, money to buy these. But you can see here that Tesla uh, will sometimes in the trading day move, let's say, uh, 30, 40, 50 dollars, right? So suddenly uh, an option here could suddenly be in the money, right? For AMC, it does move, but we've seen it's been uh, consolidating between 9 and 10 for the past few weeks. Uh, so uh, those options are going to get uh, killed. Now, for GME, it's even better because they, there's a lot more strike prices here. For GME, you can see that uh, everything that was in the money here has a uh, $1 value. So 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, right? So if it's fluctuating here and, and the ones that are farther out, they didn't create options for them. <clears throat> so this is what happens is uh, we can create options for this. Uh, someone that has a contact to a market maker, market maker is the person that uh, creates the option uh, here and adds it to the chain. So let's say a stock is significantly going up and let's say it was at 800, I don't know, suddenly. So uh, 690 would be significantly in the in the money and then these would be super expensive, but people want to be selling the contracts that are not super expensive. So then the market maker would need to create options for 800. Uh, so here, um, yeah, uh, options, uh, if you don't know the basics, you don't know the Greeks, you don't know uh, time decay, you don't know all that, don't be buying options, stay away. Uh, I You can lose so much money, so much money. It's very tempting to buy options, to buy out of the money options. Uh, it looks very sexy. Uh, you see all these Instagram posts and all these people posting how much money they made on options. Um, you need at least a few years of training before you can get really good at options. Anything you do before that is just luck. Like you, you buy options, suddenly it pops and you make some money and you think you're a big deal and you get cocky and then you lose all your money. And that's what happened to me a few times. So uh, you, need, you need a lot of experience before you jump into options. That's just my uh, opinion. Alaska Air. Alaska Air is a company that I've been watching for a few years already. Uh, they, you know, dipped significantly uh, in the pandemic, but they were on an amazing run. They ran from 30 to 100, and currently they're recovering really nice. Uh, they're back at 70, which was the price even over where they were pre-pandemic. They have earnings to, tomorrow, so it will be very interesting. This could dip, uh, you know, either way, but... Um, I wouldn't buy the day before earnings. I would wait a little bit. Uh, it can go either way. Earnings are kind of a gamble, so be careful with that. Uh, OCGN. OCGN. Um, I'm not really an expert on OCGN. Um, I know what they do, basically, uh, but... Uh, the stock, like all the other penny stock, has just been going down, 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 down. Um, I don't see a reason to get in now. It could continue to go down even, hopefully not to this two area here, but uh, to the support five could happen. Um, I, I like what they, what they have, but uh, I don't know. I'd have to do a little bit of a deeper dive into it to recommend any anyway. Seal, uh, seal. I've never heard about seal. Celios therapeutic. Uh, ooh, looking nice and a real nice uptrend here, but it did pull back from the high, right? Um, 
I'll put this on my watch list and, and take a look uh, what they do. Um, it, it looks nice. It looks here that we're making higher highs and lower lows, right? Um, so we'd have to see how this continues. I need to see how it looks on the line chart as well. Uh, yeah, it's in a, in an uptrend. Uh, no, not that's not what I wanted. This guy. See, it's in the uptrend here. Um, so, so see, it's in the uptrend here. Um, see how it reacts, how it continues. Um, interesting, interesting stock. I, I don't know what they do. What, what's their catalyst? So, have to have to see. Ride, Lordstrom Motors. I was in uh, Lordstrom for a while, uh, and I it went up, it went down, uh, and I got out like with uh, a tiny bit loss, I think, or, or no, I I made money, I made money. Um, whoa, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Technical difficulty time. Okay, <laughs> this is what I wanted. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Look. Look at that. Look at that M and M. <laughs> look at the M and M. Um, <clears throat> well, my voice is kind of uh, uh, cracking a little bit, guys. The cracking. Maybe I'll go get the whiskey. Let me uh, go get the whiskey. Uh, in, while uh, I'll I'll give you some uh, some nice music. Maybe you want some music while I go get the whiskey. Let's play some music. Let's get some music up in here. And I'll go get the whiskey. Maybe it will help my voice. I don't have the tequila. So I have these like ice thingies. They're like ice cubes, but they, uh, they're not real cubes. So you put them in the, and then it doesn't, it doesn't dilute the, the whiskey. So uh, uh, like you say in Hebrew or um, cheers. You gotta smash the like button now. Whew. It's going to clean my throat and uh, give me funnier jokes, right? Do the shimmy. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> How many people uh, dropped off from the from the music and me leaving? I, I always uh, interesting when somebody comes. Um, to a live stream and they see like nothing maybe the person went to the bathroom or something <laughs> it's uh it's funny uh, but we'll get better at these live streams i haven't done a, one in a while so uh, hopefully it was uh was okay <gasps> yeah it's uh jack daniels uh and uh i have these like uh it's not um it's like these ice cubes, but they're not real ice cubes. Um, so it doesn't dilute the whiskey, but it keeps it cold. So dilution, right? We don't like dilution. <laughs> Cheers. Ooh. Yes, Sarah. My sister's name is Sarah with the H as well. So what's your question? Sarah Aguilar. Yeah, stones. They're stones.
I forgot about ride. We were talking about ride before I went to get the whiskey. Uh, we're we're not closing the 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 stream, right? <laughs> don't don't go. Um, yeah, I'm super lightweight. Uh, like like anybody, I have uh, three kids, so if I if I uh, drink too much and you're you know if you get a little bit tipsy and then one of the kids wake up, <laughs> it's not a good situation. So I barely drink anymore, uh, but once in a while it's okay. Um, so um, ride, yes. Uh, th they're they've had uh, the wrong side of the stick right lately. Uh, ride um, there was a lot of hype it went up to 31 then they had some problems and the earnings here weren't great and the stock continues to go down listen 10 is the, the area that it was before it went out at a, as a SPAC um, and it could um, go down significantly if you put a URL I think it won't post it so try uh, Sarah try without the URL and it will uh, post um, it's interesting here at the 10 area, I, I, uh, you see this um, 8.36 area on ride, if it gets to this area it would be very very interesting uh, to get into this company, I like the company, that's why I bought, uh, there was some issues here uh, with earnings that were not great, uh, so I'll have to do like a review about the company and what's happening. I haven't, since I sold, I haven't been interested in it basically. So that's what happened. I've been, this is what happens. Sometimes you have a stock that you know a lot about and you're into it and you love it. And then you sell and uh, you, you kind of forget about it. Uh, so... Uh, King Kong and 3D, how was it? I heard it was a good movie. Um, the movie theaters in Israel haven't opened up back up uh, yet. Uh, hopefully in, in the next uh, few weeks. I have my vaccination so I can go watch the movie if I want, but it hasn't opened We have uh, shows like, you know, concerts and stuff. Yes, and um, things are... Uh, we have almost no cases in the past week or so, like, you know, 50 a day, 80 a day, which is nothing. So it's uh, going great with the vaccinations. Yes, and if you go to the AMC, you have to buy the popcorn, right? <laughs> that's the that's the way that they make money. I, I didn't even know that until like a few years ago. I was like researching a movie theater because it was in you know when you're a kid, uh, stuff like that doesn't really matter. You know, you go to the movies and you don't even think about the profitability and the things that are going on with the company right and then i was at this movie theater that we have um, nearby in a in a town where my parents live this huge like movie theater that they built and they built a mall around it and the mall is pretty uh dead right <laughs> there's not a lot of people there and i went once uh, thursday night uh here friday we usually have a vacation and um and there was tons of people because they were making uh, movies uh, for 10 shekels uh, so it's like um, two or three dollars a ticket, right? That was the the promotion. And then I was like, I was seeing that there were so many people in the mall and there were so many people at the concession line. So I said, how do they stay profitable uh, selling the tickets for, uh, you know, three dollars? So then I started Googling and started taking a look and, and then I saw that the, they usually break even on the ticket sales, right? So the ticket sales isn't important to the movie theater. What's important is to get your seat in the, in the, um, in the uh, seat, right? Your butt in the seat. Uh, and um, in Israel, they do an intermission. I don't know if in Israel, in the uh, U.S., do, do, is there an intermission in the middle of the movie? In Israel, they do an intermission, so you can get another chance to go to the concession stand and buy more popcorn. So if you didn't, and you can go to the bathroom, of course. <laughs> if you haven't had an opportunity to buy the popcorn yet, so you get another chance. I don't remember. I was, I was actually, at a, I watched, uh, I was in the U.S., uh, Two years ago was the last time I was in the U.S. Yeah, uh, and uh, I watched uh, Endgame at an AMC in uh, New York City, right? Avengers Endgame. 
uh, at uh, uh, and I don't remember what street it was. I think it was the, the one near the Ripley, believe it or not. So I think it's like in a Times Square in a, in a um, an important area. Like um, so, <clears throat> I was there and I had time to burn. Um, I was there for a sad uh, occasion <laughs> for my grandmother's uh, funeral. But uh, so, so I was there for a week and I went into the city and watched a movie. Uh, but uh, so. <laughs> uh, oh, so Sarah, you got your question. Why keep shorting if it means losing more money? So in the mind of the person that's shorting, um, they don't think that they're losing money. They think that they're going to get money, right? That they're going to profit. Um, so sometimes you'll have a company like Tesla that for about two years from 2018 to 2020, Tesla was the most hated stock on the stock market from, from a hedge fund point of view. They were shorting it like crazy. And people were talking about it, and Elon Musk was, you know, um, headbutting, had headbutts with them, and you know, people kept saying Tesla, it's too overpriced, it's overpriced, it's overpriced, and it kept going up and up and up and up, and people saying Tesla is done, it doesn't have a future, they're losing money, and then suddenly started they making money, and then they started getting better and better and better. So there's always someone that thinks that there's going to stock is going to go down. Like we see that there's when we take a look at the options, right? Uh, there's still people that are buying puts, right? There's still 90,000 puts being bought. So this means that people are thinking that the stock price is going down. Same thing with the shorts. Short Opening a short position doesn't mean that you think that the stock is going to go down to five. It could be that somebody is going trying to make uh, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 from their position, they go in with $100,000 and they try to make one, two, three percent and that's why they open the short position. Uh, if you see there's some famous uh, day traders, uh, there's one guy called Mayo Barak, he's an Israeli guy, he has a YouTube channel I think as well, but he doesn't go, I don't know if he goes live, he has like a... Um, a private group that he goes live with and he shows them what he does but I think he has like recaps uh, on his YouTube channel and he sometimes short sometimes he goes long uh, sometimes he but he's always day trading like a long means buying uh, not shorting so long would be buying and shorting would be selling uh, so sometimes he sells sometimes he buys uh, and sometimes uh, it's not for the long term that a short is open it could be a day trade it could be a swing trade you know that somebody sees a catalyst that suddenly he sees this right he sees this arrow he opens a short right uh, so it doesn't mean that it thinks that the stock is going to tank um, so that's something that we need to, to take into consideration i'm going to sip some more whiskey and you're going to smash the like button <laughs> Ooh, it uh, stings your tongue. <laughs> I think everybody on the live stream has streamed the, has uh, smashed the like button. Um, so let's continue. C L O V. Sometimes you're going to see stocks that have a short-lived uh, sque squeeze, right? Uh, this stock is not squeezing. It had a day that it went up from 7 to 8. I don't think that it's squeezing. You see it had the same day here and then it went down. Uh, so it's, it's just like SOS that everybody said that it was squeezing and it had one day that it went up and since then it's gone down. Um, so you need to be careful. Um, you need to be careful. Yeah, because uh, puppy people went to sleep. I think <laughs> people went to sleep. Uh, yeah. There was 3,547 playbacks, so um, there's not a lot of likes. 
<laughs> we should have like 3,000 likes, right? But we don't have 3,000 likes. That's, uh, that's a problem. See, the playbacks is how many people uh, came in and left. So. Uh, if they if they like then it uh, it's it goes up the number but it's uh, even if you leave the like the like uh, stays it's okay uh, I know that people don't like do you know guys um, that I have never ever ever in my life disliked any video uh, any post any anything and I don't know, that's just me. If I don't like something, then I just close the video and leave. Even if something uh, someone said really uh, aggravates me, uh, I don't dislike it. I don't, I don't get that. I don't, I don't understand the being negative, uh, but that's just me. Also, I have never unsubscribed to anybody. I know a lot of people get angry at me. Oh, you uh, missed your uh, prediction. I'm unsubscribing. You, um, you um, talk too much about AMC. I'm unsubscribing. Okay. I personally have never unsubscribed uh, to anybody. It could be that uh, I should be um, unsubscribing to them if I'm not watching their videos because if you subscribe to someone and then don't watch their videos, it hurts them more because in the new YouTube, subscribers don't mean a lot. What means a lot is views. Uh, but this is just how YouTube is weird currently. You see suddenly people with 400,000 subscribers and like 10,000 views a day. Uh, and someone with 5,000 subscribers that's getting 50,000 views a day. Uh, and at the end of the day, the views is what gets the AdSense. So subscribers, I mean, get you some? Yeah, thank you, Brendan. I'm trying to make good videos. I'm trying to make funny videos. Um, I'm trying to make interesting videos. Sometimes because of how my life is and the time difference, I get a little bit late to the table. Like I can't get videos out um, during the market. Um, but um, Dr. Gonzo says, I unsubscribe only when channels uh, start spamming. Well, uh, Sharknado, we'll look at Feebo in a second. <laughs> um, I unsubscribe when starts spanning stuff in my feed like three to four daily items. Um, okay, I get that. But I think that if you, well, you could, one option is uh, to open another user. So what I try to do is uh, I'll open another user and let's say I have a user that I uh, only have a, a financial people there. And then if I'm looking for financial, I go to that user and I uh, look at that. And if I want to, I don't know, have uh, some music, uh, I go to my main, like, it, like I, that's what I found because if you, I don't know, that's just me, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Feebo, let's take a look at Feebo. It's a good and a bad that you can open a lot of uh, users because uh, then we get all these uh, spam uh, comments and uh, things like that. FBIO, wow, uh, it's a new stock to me. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, it, it spiked, I see, and now pulled back. I don't know why it spiked and I don't know why it pulled back. So uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, it seems like it, it probably you got uh, in here or something that you got up on the way, you got in on the way up. Um, it doesn't look like a buy situation. I would uh, I would leave this and try to find a different a situation. It seems like there was a, a few days of high volume and then it pulled back. Fortress Biotech. This probably was some catalyst and now it's going uh, going down. So if you missed the catalyst and you got in at the top, um, don't don't be a bag holder. Uh, I've learned that in the past uh, few weeks or so. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, thanks for letting me know that I have a couple buddies who are trying YouTube, but I only sub and don't watch. Yeah, that's the worst thing to do. Uh, so like what, what's going on with me now is uh, I have almost uh, 30,000, almost. And I, I blew up a little bit for better or for worse, right? In February uh, and 
uh, on one side it was great uh, and on the other side it was kind of not so good because a lot of my subscribers came from SNDL videos and now SNDL is kind of dipping, right? It dipping, 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 and they're not really interested in now my videos. Um, and so I have like 10,000 people that came from those videos that aren't really watching me or they got angry at me because I don't know, I make clickbait videos or things like that that people <laughs> uh, get angry at, which I don't understand uh, anyway. Like, like it's costing you money to, uh, yes, it's costing you time. Okay, I get the time issue. Uh, but if you see in the first few minutes that it's not what you're looking for, I also uh, watch sometimes videos that are clickbait. I try not to push them. And if I push them and they're not what I was looking for, so I put it on double time. You can watch on double time and I see that it's not what I like and I, I exit. Um, but um, but all of you guys don't watch on double time. My channel watch on 0 0.25, so I have a long watch time. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah uh it's it's uh, really hard and there's been a lot of channels opening up especially in the past few months uh and there's a lot of competition so i have like 5000 or 6000 people in the notification and you know not everybody's watching and how youtube algorithm works is first they send the video out to your subscribers so you have the notifications and then you have the subscribers feed and if there's not a lot of click rate uh, from the subscribers, then they won't give uh, impressions. They won't send the video out to other other people. Now, in the stock market realm, it's even more cutthroat because these videos most of the time are good for let's say 24 hours. Once the 24 hours is done, the impressions go down significantly. So if you're um, trying to uh, find you know, uh, um, open your YouTube channel about uh, stock market, you need to know this. So uh, it, after one day, if you have like, it's like a regular channel and you do a video how to paint, uh, I don't know, the wall. So this is uh, evergreen and it's going to be pushed out for a long time, right? It's it be, you know, pop out on somebody's feed uh, once in a while. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, 0 0.25. So, in stock market, it's uh, one day, one day, maybe a day and a half that you're going to get uh, views, especially if it's like a AMC video and it's not uh, uh, Trey. Sometimes like the the CEO um, CEO interview, right? That's something that's going to be watched even a few days later. Um, but if you have uh, um, uh, you know, a short-term video, then uh, I see people are dropping off because I'm talking about YouTube. <laughs> it was on uh, Trey's intuition on a live stream indicator. It looked good at the time. Now there, ah, what, what's, ah, so uh, that was the stock, yeah. So uh, see, um, <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it happens. Uh, it happens and uh, <laughs> that's why uh, when we have, uh, when we have, uh, thank you, Sean. Yeah, uh, 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 the past week has been kind of hard for me uh, mentally, I have to tell you guys, uh, because, uh, you know, it's not easy to be a stock market YouTuber. I didn't, I didn't know this. I didn't think about this before I started actually. And I'm a sensitive guy. And when you have uh, bad comments and things like that, it uh, affects you. So you need to make sure that you have thick skin before you get um, um, into it. Uh, th there's been a lot of channels uh, <laughs> that I've seen lately. I don't want to name anybody's name. Right. And he actually the person I don't know if you guys know, but he took accountability on that. His channel blew up. Uh, he's a friend of uh, let's not say, but he's uh, and he was just reading uh, Reddit, reading Reddit posts, uh, not giving, you know, real um, anything. Uh, and his channel blew up and I was sitting on the sideline and I was saying, should I do the same thing? Right. Should I be like this person? Um, and I have, I don't know this person. Uh, I, I haven't really, I've watched his videos a few times, um, but, but not like, um, like a tray. I, I, um, I, um, 
how do you say? Uh, I respect Trey uh, and uh, I like Trey and he's done amazing. I wish it was me, <laughs> right? You always wish like you always wish if you're a basketball player, you wish that you were LeBron James, right? So he's like the LeBron James currently of the the stock. And and, and the six months ago, it was stock mode that blew up. And before that, and after that, a few months ago after that, it was Keenan. Keenan Grace blew up suddenly. Um, so I, I grew to suddenly 25, from 2000 to 25,000 in, in a few weeks. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be at 100,000 in, in like two months. And, and the last month and a half I've been stuck. Uh, and it's on me, it's on me as well. Uh, I've been making a lot of AMC videos uh, just because I feel like it's important, it's a movement. Uh, and the stock market has been going down, down, the views have been going down. So it's like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's been hard. It's been hard the past, uh, basically from the middle of March, it's been hard on me a little bit. Um, I made a decision in my life to change my career path. And I've been questioning it a little bit the past week. Um, it's not been hard. Um, it's not been hard. It's been hard also because I haven't, uh, I have you guys, right? Of course. Uh, but I haven't uh, had a lot of people um, <laughs> I haven't, uh, I just saw Dr. Gonzo's comment, he knows who I'm talking about, but <laughs> I haven't uh, had a lot of um, support from uh, outside of my family, because I haven't seen really my friends, uh, so uh, yes, I, un I understand that it's cyc cyclical, yes, Nick, I understand, uh, so I've been thinking about it like this the past week or so. Um, both of my parents are, um, let's say, independent, right? Uh, they have their own businesses, more or less. My mother is a beautician, right? My father is a little bit different, uh, but she's a beautician. So some months uh, before, let's say, the summer, she has a lot of business, and she's doing a lot of uh, waxing and things like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, other months in the winter, it's uh, more slow, you know, income is a little less. So I've been thinking about it like that, um, that some months are going to be a little lower for me and some months are going to be a little higher for me uh, and I just have to uh, keep grinding. So um, I'm going to try to get better. I'm trying to make better videos. I'm trying to make funnier videos. I'm trying to, uh, you know, do better. Uh, and uh, yeah, I want to be me uh, at the end of the day. Um, so you you fall into trying to be like other people uh, and it's it's really hard um, to look at someone that's getting suddenly 150,000 views a day and you're looking at their videos and you're saying what's going on here right uh, so like I really respect also Stockmo um, he also fell into like a kind of a groove that he was just talking about Neo but he's on the one a person I tried to reach out to a few people. Um, just when the stock market was falling, I was trying to like find support and see what they were doing, how they were dealing. And Stockmo was the only person that answered me, answered my email. And of course, I understand these guys, you know, meet Kevin and um, and uh, I don't even remember who I who I emailed. Um, I emailed Trey a few times uh, and he only like talked about me after people in the live chat said that I was talking badly about him, which I never talked about him badly. Uh, but um, he, so Stockmo was the only one. Oh, and also uh, another person uh, answered me, but that was before. Um, so Stockmo answered me and he was really, really cool and he was trying to help me out. Uh, so he said that I remind uh, him uh, of himself a lot. Uh, so that was a compliment from him because in the beginning I was trying to be stock mode. The reason I opened my uh, <laughs> the reason I opened my channel was because I saw stock mode and I said, "Wow, he just like blew up." So maybe I could be like half of him, and it would be amazing. And at the time I was working a full time job, I was doing these videos uh, until three o'clock in the morning. And sleeping like an hour or two and then doing my full-time job so I've been uh, yeah yeah I've been uh, I think it's because of the whiskey I've been talking a lot about myself for the past 10-15 uh, minutes so I'm sorry about that 
and not about stocks. Um, another person that uh, never try to be anyone but yourself. To more honest you are, the more people respect you and watch you daily because you're a genuine person. You do you, people will come. Thank you, guys. Yes, uh, story, we talked about it like three times. <laughs> Actually, Belmont and uh, Ro Ro Ranch Ranch. Um, you know why I didn't reach out to them, and it sounds weird because they don't show their face, so I don't know who's behind the the channel, and that's kind of weird for me to say that. Um, but um, that's that's actually why I didn't. I don't know why why that uh, because I I don't know who's behind there. I don't know the person, so that's. Uh, um, but another person that I was talking to in the beginning when I just started out uh, was uh, Sam from My Financial Friend. And he was really cool at the beginning helping me out. Uh, but then he got like too big time. He was around um, 15,000 subscribers when I started talking to him. And now he has 115. But on the way, he, he's been stuck uh, as well a little bit. He's done some things that I haven't agreed with. Uh, but... Um, uh, he was really helpful and then he started getting a little bit too big time too many uh, messages 5,000 people in his patreon uh, which is a lot of messages so I understand why he stopped answering my messages uh, but uh, he was helping me out at the beginning of well so I appreciate him as well um, how long have you been trading Sean asked so I've been trading about seven or eight years um, and um, yeah, as soon as I finished university and I had a little bit of money, until then I was broke. I didn't have any money. Um, I was, uh, I'm grateful for my parents that put me through university. Uh, university here in Israel isn't that expensive, by the way. Uh, compared to uh, America, you go to a university, there's about five or six universities here in Israel, and it's cost around three or four thousand dollars. Uh, a year or a semester I don't remember already uh, but it's a lot cheaper than it is in the US there's some private colleges that are uh, more expensive they're around ten thousand dollars a year yeah so I think it's uh, three thousand dollars for the year and those are the other ones are ten thousand dollars for the year so they put me through university and paid my rent and all that and I didn't have and then I only in my fourth year of engineering I started um, working a little bit so I didn't have any money once I finished that and I started working uh, in a uh, high-tech job in Israel it's called high-tech <laughs> in a um, communication uh, company uh, as uh, so I started um, I had uh, money I started investing yes <laughs> How many shares of AMC do you have? So I had 2,400 and I bought another like 300. I have like 2,700, I think now 2,800. I don't know, 2,800, something like that. So we love you, Avi. Yeah, Belmont has shown his face in live streams, setting up for more FaceTime on videos. Yeah, in the beginning, it's kind of weird to go on camera. You're not um, that uh, talented. Uh, not that uh, talented. You're not that confident, uh, but you know, in the end. Uh, so let's get back to the stocks and we'll do uh, a, a little bit more. And I think I'm getting a little bit tipsy. <laughs> we'll finish the, the whiskey. What do you think of uh, ticker symbol RIG? Gonna go to 5G. <sighs> um, Rye X 63 I hope I, you're one of my favorite people on in the um, comments I've been trying uh, I love answering your guys uh, comments on especially AMC videos uh, but uh, my wife said that I uh, Jack Daniels that I shouldn't do, do it so much because of the bad comments and it's affecting me but I love seeing like comments from you so um, how do you feel about a bunch of early 20 year olds giving stock advice based on unproven due diligence? First of all, I have respect for them because putting yourself out there is, um, is hard. 
right? That's first and foremost to have respect to them that they're putting themselves out there and they're, they're making videos. Okay. Second of all, um, I have a little bit of a, um, that I don't think I would have had the confidence uh, after being in the market for one year to make videos, but that's just me. Um, and it's it's great. It so, so shows chutzpah. It shows um, if you don't, if you weren't before, chutzpah is like spunk, right? It shows that you, this is a person um, that, it, that uh, wants to, you know, that has confidence. Um, I, I wouldn't uh, jump behind people um, that weren't, aren't putting their money on the line. If they're putting their money on the line and they're um, buying stocks as well, then it's fine, right? They are saying, I'm buying this, I'm putting uh, $1,000, fine. But if they're, I, I, I didn't like the, the fact that in the beginning I saw people, especially people like, uh, well, it's a little bit different because Chris Sane, uh, he, his whole philosophy with his channel was that he was trying to help the small guy, right? And he was going in with a hundred dollar positions and he's saying, I'm going in and you guys, a small guy, you go with a hundred dollar position as well for, for him. And what he says he has, and, and of course he's grown significantly. So I'm sure he has money now, but, um, hundred dollars would be like i i don't i don't i do i don't do hundred dollars trades that's just my portfolio uh i i could have done um hundred dollar trades but i just didn't feel like i've seen some people that um <laughs> yeah I, i'm getting a little bit too tipsy here <laughs> that they did a um, hundred dollar trades and they have 50 stocks 100 stocks in their portfolio and then they make a video and they say i'm buying this stock and they buy uh, 10 shares of the stock and then uh, a thousand two thousand three thousand people go after them and buy that stock as well and then the stock tanks and then that person lost five bucks right uh and so that's what i have an issue with if you're saying that you're buying a stock and you're going in then go in with the position that's good for your portfolio like I said, with penny stocks, 2%, 3% max. When I go in with a position, that's what I'm doing. Um, so I put my money uh, where my mouth is. Uh, so that's that's the only thing I have a little bit about that. Uh, but again, when if you're 20 years old and you only have a thousand bucks, so if you can only buy with $50, so that's an issue that you're giving advice to people, but uh, that's your portfolio and that's what you're doing. Again, I wish that people would, uh, like I said, someone asked before, go trade for three or four years, get really good at YouTube, make YouTube video about, about something else, and then do the stock market. Because I think it's really hard, and we've seen in the past few months that it's it's uh, very hard mentally as well. Um, Israeli stocks. Uh, so Teva, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't like Teva. Uh, Teva is in a not the greatest situation. A lot of Israeli people, uh, you can see the graph here, uh, love Teva, love Teva. Um, a lot of the, um, in Israel, uh, you have like a 401k and these big, um, I don't know what they're called in, in the US, um, but they're called uh, like they manage the money for your for your retirement funds and all those things. Um, so they were very heavy in Teva, and when Teva fell, uh, a lot of people lost a lot of money. It's currently at ten dollars. Um, they have a lot. It's it, they laid off a lot of people in Israel. Um, so I'm I'm not I'm not uh, big on Teva. Um, just from the sentiment. But I do like a lot of other Israeli companies. Uh, you know, I should do like a video about uh, Israeli companies again. Um, there's an Israeli company that I really like and I used to wa work for the company. This was the company that I, I had left uh, and um, I don't know if I can talk about them. So, but I don't know. But there's a lot of is amazing Israeli companies, so. Baidu, and then we'll we'll call it a day because I think I shouldn't have drank all the whiskey <laughs> and not eaten anything. 
Baidu. Ooh, Baidu. Uh, yeah. Can I remove this? What did I do here? This is uh, from a while ago. Baidu. Uh, it's fallen from grace. It was, it is this huge Chinese company, uh, and it, it had a run up here from 100 to, uh, 354. It's pulled back, uh, like, you know, since, uh, February, like a lot of these stocks that went up big, but this is a very big company. Uh, and I think that the whole Chinese, uh, thing is a little bit scary for a lot of people still. We could see a run up again in it because... It is a big company. It's not like a penny stock, uh, but uh, I still have Baba stock. Um, the Chinese stocks is in a weird cycle. We keep getting these information that they're going to be delisted and they're having information issues and things like that and this and that. And then people run away from the Chinese stocks and then they come back after a while when they see that um, that. Um, everything is okay right so with Baidu again I don't know what their catalysts are I'm not I'm not big on the company but uh, AABB is hurting me hurting me hurting me hurting me I was in the stock and then I got out and then I got in and then it went down again and it's doing me dirty <laughs> it's doing me dirty uh, it's doing me dirty yeah I don't know what to do with it uh, I'm afraid and this is like human emotion um, because last time I sold and then it ran a back up to 0 0.6. So I'm thinking that if I sell again, then it will run up on me again and the same thing will happen. Uh, that's the only reason I'm holding. I shouldn't be doing this. I know that I shouldn't be doing this. I know I should have sold it already. Um, but just because what happened last time that I was up on it big and I held it and then it pulled back and then it ran up again and now it's back down. And a lot of these crypto stocks, especially, you know, we've seen Riot pull back. Bitcoin price is going up and in the past few days it's gone. This is because of the coin that went up and then went down and now it's back up. Um, the only one that uh, really recuperated for us is the BC, um, where is it? This one, B B B K C F, right? That it dipped on the day that Coinbase came out, but then it had two green days uh, re recuperating a little bit. Uh, so this one has been behaving for us better. AABB, um, I don't know. I've, I haven't been doing a lot of changes with the penny stock challenge because the stocks continue to go down and it's been really hard to find uh, good ones. Um, so I'm just like sitting on the side a little bit. I still have a little bit of money uh, and I'll be waiting to see... Uh, What's going going to happen there? But I said with AB, AABB, I wouldn't be putting any more money on it, even though it's been dipping to lower the cost basis. I said I wasn't going to be putting any more money in it, so that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, we talked about this, Aiden, a few times uh, uh, already. On the, we've seen here that uh, we had at 820, this is uh, not 8, 18, 627 uh, Eastern time, there was a 33.75 uh, price sold at 4.48. This could be that somebody sold at this level, right? It could be um, that we had someone put by accident, and this is something that happens by accident sometimes. Someone put in a buy order for 33.75 and someone saw it and they sold their 448 shares and it brought down the stock. This is something that could happen. Uh, and we'll have to see, you know, going forward. Maybe I'll, I'll sober up a little bit. Uh, no, I don't know if I'll make a video about this today because I think that by pre-market it's going to change uh, and uh, I'm a little bit tipsy, so I think <laughs> I won't be making another video for today, but I had fun uh, and uh, hopefully you guys had fun too uh, and I'll see you tomorrow and uh, please uh, watch the videos, support the channel, um and i love you all <laughs> and let's make some money I'm, I'm one of the people that when they drink they tell everybody that they love them no <laughs> but it's been fun and we'll, we'll see you next time so
it's okay it's okay if you didn't smash the like button just continue watching and i'll be happy uh, and i'll be happy that you guys are making money and the situation in the stock market that the growth stocks keep going back up and we recuperate and we're we're happy and uh and whoever is shorting will be um will be sad right because shorting in the end is kind of a mean thing to do so that's it <laughs> Although I do buy puts sometimes when I'm day trading options, but that's for another another um, video. That's not the same thing as shorting. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time and let's make some 